How's it going everyone? Welcome back to another video here on the channel and in today's video I'm going to do a quick little mod that I have been meaning to do for the go-kart for quite a while now uh, Especially ever since I removed the governor from my predator 212 engine and that mod is replacing the stock valve springs from the predator 212 with an upgraded set of Honda 18 pound valve springs so without further ado Let's go ahead and get right into tearing this thing down and explaining to you why I need to replace these so about a year ago I went ahead and uh, took out the governor out of my Predator 212 after a lot of recommendations from you viewers. That video is on the channel um, on the build playlist for my go-kart. I'll put a link in the description um, for that video. I think there's two videos of us swapping out the governor. Um, so that governor uh, uh, delete or per se is a great free mod. It livens up the engine so much. It makes it much more responsive, uh, a lot more. It does. It just doesn't feel, you know, choked off because you know you hit that governor limiter at a certain RPM. Now it can go much higher in the RPM range, much more top end speed and power. Um, but with that higher RPM range, you need a heavier pound valve spring because without a heavy enough pound valve spring, you'll get actually something called valve float. So that is, has to do with the K value, the constant value of the spring and how much force is required to you know, fully compress and decompress the uh, spring. And at a certain RPM, because the engine is so, going so fast, the, the lighter valve springs will actually just kind of float in the middle. They won't fully um, you know, compress and decompress. So your valves at a certain RPM, the higher RPMs without the governor, the valves won't actually close and open. They'll kind of just sit in the middle and float. And obviously that is not good for the performance of your engine. Whereas with these new 18 pound valve springs, even with the crazy high RPMs, it's going to make sure the spring fully engages and disengages or compresses and decompresses, however you want to say it, um, to you know fully open and close the exhaust and intake valve. So I, a little after I took the governor out, <coughs> I bought a stage one hop-up kit from OMB Warehouse. Came with the air filter, the exhaust header, carb jet, and um, the heavier valve springs. Um, so I did all the other ones except the valve springs, I just never got around to it. So in today's video, I'm going to remove the old ones and kind of just show you a brief step-by-step -step on the process of swapping the valve springs into your Predator 212 or Honda clone engine. All right, so the first step here is I'm going to just kind of clear the area for um, opening the valve cover here. So I'm going to take off the exhaust header and my jerry-rigged um, return spring for my throttle, which is another something that I have to kind of make a more permanent solution for. Um, and then once I do that, take the spark plug out and we can kind of uh, open that up and uh, expose the valve springs and lifters. So the socket size that you're going to use to remove the uh, valve cover bolts here is an 8 millimeter. Get my handy dandy Harbor Freight magnetic tool bowl or uh, bolt slash nut bowl. Okay, and so once you get that off, you can go ahead and remove the spark plug lead. That'll kind of free up the valve cover area. Okay, so once you tuck the spark plug lead out of the way and some few other hoses, you can remove your valve cover, which will expose your lifters, your valve springs, your push rods, etc., etc. So what you're going to want to do next is actually not mess with your lifters or your valve springs yet. Is you're actually going to want to take your spark plug out. And so for some reason my standard spark plug socket, my deep socket, does not fit this one. I don't know why. So I'm just going to be using a standard crescent wrench. But obviously if you have a deep socket that fits over this guy, that is more ideal. And you can take that guy on out. 
All right, so spark plug is not looking in too bad of shape. This is the one we replaced back in April of 2017, so it's a year and a few months old. So it's, you know, not too bad, not wet or anything, so that's good. Um, so the reason you actually want to do this is because you want to, one, raise the uh, engine as high as you can to top dead center um, so that it brings the piston head all the way to the top of the cylinder. And then you're going to actually feed um, sort of a, a rope in here. Um, and the reason why you want to do that is when you take your valve springs out, um, your valves are actually just going to want to fall. There's nothing holding them up. So the rope will kind of keep them from falling into your cylinder because if that happens, then you either have to take the head off or, um, yeah, you have to take the head off and retrieve those. So, you know, to avoid having to do that, this is just kind of like a home um, way of doing that. I'm sure there's more of an official, maybe a tool that holds the valves in place, but feeding a rope through the spark plug port um, does the job just fine. So I don't know how well you guys can see on the camera here, I'm trying to shine my light in the right way, but actually the piston is actually sitting at top dead center right now. So we can go ahead and start feeding our rope through to prevent our valves from falling down. So I've just got some standard uh, nylon parachute cord here that I'll be using. Um, anything really works, nylon, I like nylon. It's good quality material and uh, you don't really have to worry about it. Uh, breaking off too much and if you want what you can do with these nylon cords is um, burn the end so it keeps it from fraying and it makes it easier to feed through your spark plug hole. So just slowly but surely you know feed the uh, nylon cord into the spark plug port. Be careful not to jam it too hard. Could use a, a small screwdriver to kind of help push it through a little bit but you're just trying to feed it through just enough so that it fills up any extra gap in the cylinder um, so that your valves do not fall down because that will make this job a little more difficult than it should be. So once you kind of get that packed in as much as you can, you don't want to shove it too tight because you don't want to get it stuck. Um, you can go ahead and then start attacking the jam nuts that hold your rocker arms um, that uh, move the push rods to compress the valve springs. So there's two nuts here on top of each rocker arm. Um, the top one is just kind of like a jam nut that holds the position of the lower one in place. And so for the top one here, you're going to want a 10 millimeter socket and you can go ahead and break that guy loose. Um, you might have to use a crescent wrench to hold the other one from spinning um, at the same time. So the crescent wrench that I'll be using to keep it from spinning is a 14. And then once you do that, you can break that jam nut loose. So this guy is the guy that actually you use to set your valve lash. So that'll be later on in the video. Um, but that is basically how much, uh, um, how, how far you tighten or torque down this nut and um, how much force or leeway is um, allowed to be applied on the valve spring. So that'll either um, prevent, that can prevent your engine from uh, turning over um, with the necessary compression actually. And that was something that I learned the hard way when replacing the governor and my valves fell down or was it the valves or the push rods fell down? I can't remember, one of the two. If you guys remember back to my governor removal video, I actually had the valve lash um, way too tight um, and you use a tolerancing tool. I'll again show that later on in this video. Um, but that'll prevent the engine from starting because it won't allow the rocker arm and valve to compress um, the way it should to provide the necessary compression. Sometimes it'll feel like there's more compression or not enough compression um, based on the valves um, uh, not compressing all the way. So just go ahead and take off the other jam nut here and lash nut. Okay, so now both rocker arms are off, and now we can go ahead and start attacking the actual valve springs. So I was actually fiddling with this and actually um, accidentally went ahead um, one step off camera, but basically when you have the valves, um, they're gonna have these little retaining clips, and this might vary 
Um, I've seen different designs um, depending on what year of um, Predator you have and if it's a Hemi or a non-Hemi. Um, but on this model here, uh, this has these two little retaining clips that kind of go around the valve shaft, if you will, or valve. Um, and that, that holds the top hat on to the valve spring. And obviously, you're going to want to reuse the stock um, hat on the stock from the stock valve spring but you can go ahead and put this guy in your parts bin and um, swap in your 18 pound one go ahead and open this guy up so this will be a little bit more difficult because it is a heavier valve spring but um, you know I think once we get the hat on there and it, from what it looks like is the spring is uh, symmetrical. It's not like one side is meant to be facing the engine and one side is supposed to, be, uh, supposed to be facing up. So it looks symmetrical. So now what you can do is just um, snap that top hat into place on the spring. And then you can go ahead and start working at um, compressing this guy. And while it's compressed, you got to get those two retaining clips um, back onto the valve uh, shaft there. And the, re the retaining clips actually have kind of this, uh, let's see if I can get the camera to focus here. And the retaining clips have this kind of conical shape to them. Um, so what you're going to want to do is actually the wider end is going to go towards the top and the more narrow end is going to go towards the bottom. So kind of like that. Not lined up obviously, but they're going to the fatter end is going to be towards the top and the more narrow end towards the actual um, engine. One thing I want to also note is that it's a good idea to add um, a paper towel down here because these little retaining clips uh, do uh, fly off sometimes and I've been trying to get this thing on for a little while now. Um, so it's a good idea to just have this down here to make sure it catches them and they don't fall into the lower crevice of the uh, head there. Alright, so I finally got the left valve back in um, with the new valve spring, but man, I tell you, that was a pain in the butt. Um, it seems that a lot of Predators have different um, valve caps, like mine do not have these lash caps, that this is literally the end of just the valve rod, or the valve shaft. And those little conical pieces that are split right here, that you can see, um, I have never seen any other videos on YouTube with any other uh, Predators that have that. Um, a lot of them seems like they have these uh, oblong holes that you use to push in and then lock it in place and then you just put your cap over it. Um, so these are a real pain. This literally took me a good 30 minutes to get in um, by pushing on it, trying to use a wrench um, and whatnot. So, but it's in now, I just literally had to push it in far enough where that these two clips can grab and then it prevents the valve from coming back up. So now I just gotta take off the right valve here and do the same thing. All right, so I finally got the right valve off. Um, really, I don't have too much advice as far as like trying to get this thing on and off. Um, it's just, you gotta fiddle with it until it comes off, until you get it back on. These little retaining clips are a real big pain in the butt. Uh, just for a side by side, on the left we have the stock Predator valve springs, on the right we have the Honda one. So you can see they definitely have um, a lot more coils to them. So that'll add that little bit extra bit of uh, resistance to those valves to reduce valve float at higher RPMs. Alright, so I got both back on. Like I said, I wish I had a more concrete method for you guys that have these version of the uh, valve spring like cap uh, clip things. Uh, I couldn't find any other videos, like I said, that have this version, but 
Um, it definitely doesn't make it easy. The ones, if you have the ones with the uh, oblong hole that has one larger hole that you can push the spring down and then clip it in place and then you put your lash cap over, you lucked out. Um, with this one, I just found that you just really have to, it helped to put the clips into the hat first and then you just push the spring over and compress it with your fingers. I mean, my fingers are raw right now. They hurt so bad because um, I had to try this probably about 20 times each spring before I got them to clip on. Um, and if you can get one to sit, then you can kind of push it farther and then just kind of push the other one to sit below it. Like I said, I wish I had a better method for you guys. You really just have to fiddle with it. Um, it's just one of those things. But now that we have those back out, we can go ahead and put our um, rockers back on and then we can start setting our valve lash. So now that we have the valve strings back in, you can go ahead and remove your uh, cord here. I had to put a little bit more than normal because I have a smaller diameter cord. All right, so we got the rocker arms back on and I got the first like lash nut on. Um, so what you want to do now is you want to consult your uh, Predator engine manual um, to get the correct valve lash for your valve springs. So this side's your exhaust valve and the right side is your intake valve. And in your manual here, I believe in the very beginning, first page, it has the valve lash, or they call it valve clearance. Um, for the different valves. So the intake valve, valve clearance can be all the way to a tenth to a fifteenth of a millimeter. And for the exhaust, it can be from a fifteenth to a twentieth of a millimeter. So you can go ahead and get your clearance tool and start uh, working on the clearance between the top part of the rocker arm and the lash cap or, you know, hat on your uh, valve spring. So for those that have never seen a lash tool before, here's what you have. This is just kind of like a shim guide. So you just have a series of different thicknesses of um, shims here that you're going to use to stick in between the top of the rocker arm and your valve spring hat. Um, and you're just going to go based on the manual like I had just gone over and you'll use that um, desired uh, shim to get the correct lash on your valve springs. Okay, so now we have the intake valve set, like I said, tenth of a millimeter to fifteenth of a millimeter. Use your feeler tool, um, and then once you kind of get it locked in place, you can go ahead and um, put your cap nut on, and then you know lock that in like a like you would with a jam nut, so that it maintains that position um, for your clearance. So I'm kind of using, I have three shims here, three lash um, sets, and I'm kind of using the 18th of a millimeter um, as kind of like the happy medium between 15 and 20. Okay, so I think that's good. So we'll go ahead and put our jam nut on there. Be careful not to cross thread this. And then again, use your where is it? 14 millimeter crescent with your 10 millimeter socket and lock, oops, just moved it a little bit. Lock the positioning in place. And then go ahead and check again with your shim to make sure everything, because sometimes like this tightened up a little bit. So we might be okay. I think we're still okay. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and roll with that. Then what they say next to do when you want to relash an engine is kind of pull it, pull the pull cord a few times, cycle it, and then check your gauges again um, to make sure the lash uh, stayed the same and didn't change a whole lot. All right, so let's go ahead and pull the pull cord, cycle the engine a few times. Again, make sure your uh, cord that you put in to stop the valves from falling through is out. That 
should be plenty. And now we will check again with our feeler tool. That still fits. That's in an awkward position. And that still fits. That's tighter, so. Ooh, that one might need to be loosened a little bit. But we're gonna go ahead and give it a try um, and see how that does. All right, so I went ahead and just kind of adjusted the intake valve lash a little bit um, just to make sure we didn't have it too tight. So now go ahead and put in our spark plug once again, and you can either use your crescent wrench or the provided spark plug wrench that comes with your engine. Okay. So now we can go ahead and put the valve cover gasket back on, followed by your valve cover. All right, so now you got your valve cover back on and put your spark plug lead on and put the header back on and we're pretty much uh, ready to fire this thing up. All right, got all the parts put back on. Let's go ahead and give it a test fire and see if it comes to life. All right, so before I wrap up, fire it up good, sounds good, runs good, we're gonna go ahead and lower it off the jack stands and I'm gonna go ahead and run it around the neighborhood a few laps, um, just a few times. Hopefully my neighbors don't get mad. Put my uh, official Harbor Freight racing gloves on, you know. Alright, let's roll.
All right, everyone, that's going to do it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed some of the how-to-ness on replacing your valve springs on a Predator 212. Um, if you have any other questions about replacing the valve springs, please leave a comment and I'll be happy to try and answer them for you. Hope you guys enjoyed the footage of driving it around. It felt really good. I think the valve springs definitely uh, add a little bit of you know openness to the engine. It's hard to tell, but you can kind of just almost feel it. And that thing just feels so fast. I mean, you're so low to the ground. It is such a blast to drive. So many more videos to come on the, the go-kart. That was item number one on my summer to-do list for kind of refreshing the go-kart. So the next video will be the next thing on the list. So thanks so much guys for watching. If you haven't already, definitely subscribe to the channel for more content. And I will see you guys in the next one.